just starting our stream up here and just getting everything going. It looks like we're live across the board here. Let me get a couple windows up so I can see the chat. And hello and welcome everyone. Should be fun today. Welcome. Great to see so many of you popping in. And just let me get one more window going here and we should be ready to go. All right, looks good. All right, hello, Stephen Arducey, how are you? And um, hello, Victoria, I see you over there in the chat. And welcome, everyone. Uh, we should have some fun here with doing a little Photoshop retouching. And I think I teased you with the title being uh, the Photoshop Retoucher Secret Weapon. So we'll see. Uh, I think once you see the secret weapon, you'll say, well, hey, that's not a secret. <laughs> but I think you'll enjoy uh, at least learning some tips about it. Uh, hey, Bake Like a Pro, what's going on, man? Thanks for all the tweets and retweets and direct messages. Good to see you here. And positive image and everyone else that's popping in the chat. And hello, Leon and Kep. I see you over there as well. So I could spend another 15 minutes uh, doing shout outs, but I think we should go ahead and get to the content at hand. So today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about retouching. And retouching sometimes can be a sensitive topic only because, like many other things or just about anything else you can do on a computer, people sometimes overdo it. We've all seen and sometimes even participated in those over retouched or fake very fake looking images <clears throat> and typically that because that's because we take a good thing too far in other words um, it's okay to retouch a portrait it's expected especially in commercial work but when you make the person look like they're not supposed to look or look you know 30 years younger that's when it's usually going too far luckily we're not doing skin retouching or any of that today uh, so we don't really have too much of a chance to go too far in what we're going to do today. But this secret, this tool, can, can and has been taken too far often. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some tips on how to use it. I'm going to give you some tips on how to know when, when to stop, not to cut back too far, or not to go too far, to cut back. And then from there, um, I'll leave it up to you. Um, with great power comes great responsibility. All right, so let's pop over to the computer where I've got Photoshop CC already running and ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and open up some images and uh, we'll do uh, some examples um, with each image and uh, I'll let you in on the secret now. The secret is all about the liquify filter. The liquify filter is the retoucher secret weapon. We use all kinds of tools in retouching, spot healing, um, clone stamp, dodge and burn, and a, and a litany of other filters and things, but the liquify tool used the right way can be really, 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 really useful, really helpful, and done, right, done the right way, really not noticeable, meaning in a bad way, to your client. So let me show you some examples of how it can be used. A few tips and tricks on how to use it the right way and um, some things that you should look for is in terms of excuse me in terms of things that are candidates for the liquify filter so I've shown this photo before um, I'll bring it up again and I'll bring it up again and again and again until I oh hang on I'm on the wrong keyboard here let me switch keyboards there we go it's like why are my keyboard shortcuts not working all right, now we're on the right keyboard. Okay, uh, so in this case, what we're looking for in this particular shot, if this is just a standard portrait of your friend, fine, great, no problem. But if you were using this portrait to sell clothing or this was for a portfolio or fashion or anything like that, then what starts to become an issue are all the big wrinkles in the clothes. And, and these are just comfortable because of the way he's sitting um, this is his pants pocket, I assume, sticking out on the side, and the fold in the sweater and the fold over here. And those are the kinds of things that are distracting from a fashion standpoint. From a, just a guy sitting in a chair standpoint, not a big deal. But once you, um, once you 
see this going forward, you you will probably look for it and know you shouldn't be doing it this way. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Michael, I'm not sure what your audio problem is, but um, pearly cream cheese. Great. Okay. Everyone's saying the audio is fine on their end. So, not sure what the audio issue you're, is you're having. All right. But anyway, let's get to it. So, my first tip, and this is one that often goes overlooked because when the liquify filter came out, it was um, destructive, meaning that every time you applied it, either you duplicated your layer first or you made a backup copy or whatever, because when you apply it, you are physically altering pixels. And while that hasn't changed, what has changed is the ability to go into your filter menu and change the layer you're about to apply it to, to a smart filter layer, or basically a smart object. So if you apply this first, this will A, let you always undo the filter you're about to apply, apply, and B, it'll let you go back in and tweak it further without having to start from scratch. So if I say convert for smart filters, it will convert that layer into a smart object layer, so that way, now when I apply the um, liquify, if I don't like it later on, I can always come back and undo it. So if I go to filter, come back down to liquify, now when it brings up the liquify dialog box, um, I can do anything I want and it will um, be non-destructive for that layer. All right, so I'm gonna turn down some settings here. My brush is super huge. So I'm bring the brush down. All right, so question becomes, first and foremost, well, how big should your brush be and what tool am I on? The first tool I'm on is the one that you're on by default. It's the warp tool. We're going to go through a few of these. We won't get through all of them, but there are some other tools besides the warp tool that you should know about. So let me jump out. And now let's go ahead and attack some of this uh, wrinkly stuff over here. Now I'm also going to switch views so you can kind of see me. Uh, let's see if I can get this view up here. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, why did it switch to that key? Okay, that's why I can't see it. Oh, sorry. Hang on, I didn't mean to run the ad. Hold on, let's get out of that. Why is that? Hang on, I need to change the keyboard shortcut here. That should be number three. All right. Um, that's better. Okay, so now, um, uh, this way I brought it up so you can see me work with the Wacom pen, which I highly recommend as well um, for working on any type of retouching. All right, so let's go ahead and just, I'm just using this tool to kind of push this wrinkle or this fabric or this pocket or whatever it is back in. So I think I left off explaining, well, how big should your brush be? Your brush should be the size of the thing you're trying to move. So maybe a little bit bigger than that, but that's about it. So same thing in the, over here is I want to make this brush a little bit smaller. So uh, I just want to push this in, not too small, but I just want to push that in a little bit and just kind of fix some of these wrinkles just to make that a little bit less distracting. Okay, now the one over here. Now this used to be a problem when it was so close to the edge because liquefied by default would literally pull the edge of it in. And if you didn't notice it, it was a dead giveaway that you retouch the photo because there'd be a little white spot or background color spot pulled in. Luckily now, um, in, your, um, in your options or your properties for the um, liquify filter, there's a new default option, or maybe it's not default, but you want to make sure this is checked, pin edges. Because if that's checked, it will not bring the edge of the photo inward. Uh, so I can go ahead and touch this all day long. And even though I'm pulling on the edge of the photo, it's not going to allow me to bring the edge of the photo in because of the pin edge uh, effect turned on. Okay, so just a few little things like that to kind of make a photo again that's okay, make a little bit better. If you really want to get carried away, you might want to do the one that's down there on the pants as well and just kind of pull that one in. And if there's like an existing crease, like there's an existing crease in the, in the pants themselves, you want to go in that direction. Because again, you're trying to make it not look so much like you did it. And if I go like the, that crease goes up all of a sudden, then it will look like I did it. All right. So that was it. Uh, we can turn the preview off. So that was before. Now it looks crazy with all that stuff popping out. 
and this is after. So before, after, and if we click OK, it'll render it. And because we did the convert for smart filters first, um, it will uh, apply it as a smart filter uh, effect. So I can go in at any given time and turn that off, get right back to the original. So I have not altered my photo in any way or turn it back on or double click and get right back to where I left off. And that's the other thing I like about doing um, smart filters as well. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of that. We got it the way we want. And that would be an example of how to use liquify to your advantage. Now, when I say people overdo it, if we look at his ear, his ear on this side of his face, just because of the angle and just because we can't see the other ear all the way, this ear looks bigger than that ear. So what people would tend to want to do is liquefy that ear to make it smaller. And that's up, okay, I'm going to leave it here. That's between you and your client. If your client is okay with you doing that to their ear, have at it. If it's for you and your work and your portfolio and not for the client, that's your decision. But don't do that to someone's facial features without their consent. <laughs> In other words, the nose, if you feel the nose is too big, if you feel the ear is too big and you're going to make it smaller or make it bigger or do whatever else to body parts, um, you, could be in, you could be insulting the subject. So I know that's why his ear looks bigger because it is looking bigger than the Owen on the other side just because of the angle. But if, I, um, if the client was okay and they said, hell yeah, my ear looks too big, bring it down, then in that case, you could liquefy it down. Um, so just be, be wary of things like that before you jump to go do it. Just make sure it's okay that they're okay with you doing that. All right, so let's go ahead and um, close. Let me make sure back on the right keyboard. Yep, let's go make sure we close this one. Don't save, and let's bring up this one now. This one's kind of fun. Now the hat is really designed to kind of flip around and flop around like it is. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's okay the way it is. But if you were trying to lift up a piece of fabric like that, maybe you weren't okay with it, or maybe it wasn't supposed to dip down, then liquify would be a way to do it. So once again, we can go up to our filter menu, come down to convert for smart filters. That will make it non-destructive, and then we'll go to our filter menu. Now, you'll see two liquefies, especially if you're new to filters. You'll see the one that we started with, and then you'll see this one. You'll say, well, which one do I use? If you're starting a new image and you're not trying to do the exact same thing you did last time, then you want to do the same one you picked the first time. This is a, this, think of this as like a repeat. So this would repeat the exact same liquefy you did last. And we liquefied pants and all kinds of things that aren't in this image, so it would just not work properly. So we want to always start from scratch to go to this one. And then, same thing, we're going to go and adjust our brush bigger. Grab our Wacom uh, stylus. Now I'm going to make it nice and big because I'm just going to go ahead and start pushing this up. And the bigger I make that brush, the more natural that would look. Now. I kind of evened it out, but that little part's still flipping up right there on the edge. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and kind of bring that little part down, kind of even it up. Okay, so that's cool. Same thing for the back of the hat over here. If you wanted to push that down, you could, but I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to undo that. All right, let's push that back up. I'm going to show you a different technique because we kind of get warp. Warp just pushes things around. And that's cool. Um, but what if you wanted to um, reduce something by dragging along the edge? Now, and again, this gets into um, just this is the way certain features of a person will photograph. If we look at her collarbone, her collarbone's awesome. It's a great collarbone. But as we get to the edge, it kind of like sticks up a little bit off to the edge because of just, again, just the way it was angled, the way it was photographed, the way it was lit, that's the way it looks. Same thing on this side. There's a little bit of a, just a little notch right there. And if you wanted to smooth those down and your client was okay with that kind of work, then let me show you another tool. That tool is the push left tool. 
And you're probably saying, well, where's the push right tool? Why is there only one? The push left tool is both left and right. It just depends on which way you drag it. Let me make my brush. I don't actually I don't need to make it that big. So watch what happens when I drag it to the right versus when I drag it to the left or pushed up or down. So when I drag it to the right, watch what happens. <laughs> it exaggerates that. So it starts to pull up. So I want to go to the opposite way. And actually, I want to back off that a little bit. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. I want to go the opposite way and kind of smooth down like so. All right, same thing over here, just a hair. Smooth that out, perfection. And now, same thing over here. Now we want a bigger one because we're going to do a bigger piece of fabric. So let's go ahead. And again, we're going to drag in the same direction. We know that going to the left will push it down, going to the right will pull it up. So we're just going to go ahead and just push it down and push it down and push it down and kind of smooth that out like so. So again, um, just subtle changes before, after, before, after. All right, you can't see, you can't see, we can't see, you can't see, you can't see because the monitor's in the way. All right, you saw it on the hat though. Uh, let me pull the monitor out of the way and let me undo it. I'll undo it for you, put it back to the way it was, and we're using the push, and now you should be able to see it. Just gonna push it over that way. Can't see, can't see. You're right, you can't see. All right, same thing up here. I'm just gonna push this down. So I'm just dragging it to the left. If I drag it to the right or down, it does that. If I drag it to the left, it does that. And that's bad in both cases because the hat was fine. All right, let's pull that back out. Okay, you can now. Great, perfect. All right, so um, again, now you got our before and after. And the shoulder, again, very subtle. Didn't really change the structure of her collarbone. That's the way it looked. And some people may like the little collarbone sticking up on the edges. So that's totally up to you and your client. All right, but there you go. Before and after. And now you got it. Let's click OK. And let's close this one. And we're going to see a couple more features now. Let's go ahead and open up this one. This is an old favorite. I've done this one a million times. And, uh, and <laughs> I, I give him credit. It would take a lot for me to stand like that on the beach with shirtless. But I'll give him credit for that. Um, but if he said, hey, man, could you, you know, tuck it in a little bit for me? Then again, we go filter, um, convert for smart filters, and we'll go uh, liquefy. Now again, uh, this is getting back to that overdoing it. We know this guy is, you know, not the youngest guy in the world, and therefore we don't want to um, make him look like he's got a six pack and he's, you know, um, actually that's probably worse. There we go. We don't want to make him look unrealistic. So again, if we were going to use the push tool and make our brush a lot smaller on the keyboard, that's your left and right bracket keys. If I were to just push down a little, like so, then I could maybe do that. And I, I can get away with that. That might be a little bit overdoing it, but I can get away with that. Now, I didn't really bring you in to this image for the front. I brought you in for the part of the image back here. This is what he's really concerned about. So let's go and undo that. Let's say we want to take care of the back. The problem is, if I were to push that, look at what happens to the stripe behind it. And that's the feature I really want to talk about. So there is a tool inside of Liquify called the Freeze Mask Tool. The Freeze Mask Tool. Before you actually do your liquefy, you paint the areas that you don't want to move or be disturbed. So I can, you know, go as crazy as I want out here. That doesn't matter. I mean, it's just going to go ahead and paint those areas that I don't want to move. In other words, I don't want the edge, he's standing by a surfboard. I don't want the edge of the surfboard to move. Now that I've done that, I can go back to my shift, um, my push right tool. 
and I can I just go ahead and push that right now just a little bit there we go smooth that out and just take off five pounds and without disturbing the key or I want to say keyboard surfboard so there we are before oh and I left that kind of hanging there let's go ahead and fix this real quick I didn't undo it all the way push that back out just a little bit more like that would probably be a little bit more a little realistic all right there we go so we click OK on that and again our before our after without disturbing the surfboard now every photo you take of me if I'm out and about you do this <laughs> before you post it on social media I greatly appreciate it so the question I see out there is am I using a uh, Wacom tablet I'm using a Wacom Cintiq uh, that is allowing me to actually do this right on screen so yes I always use a Wacom tablet when I'm doing uh, this kind of work so again if you're gonna take a picture of me and post it on social media don't take it from the side and if you do make sure you you know take off five pounds much appreciated all right next All right, let's go in. Oh, let's go to this guy. Okay, I've shown this guy before. And um, this is a stock photo. I don't know this guy. But obviously, one eye is bigger than the other. We all have one whatever bigger than the other. That's natural. But in this case, he's like, I don't know him, but he, I'm, I'm assuming he's saying, man, my right eye is just so much bigger than my left eye. Can you bring that down for me a little bit? Well, if again, if we go in and we do our filter menu, we go to our um, convert for smart filters, we go back to liquify, and that's my, I'm out of time, but let's go ahead and um, uh, crush through these real quick. We go into what is called and what is brand new in Photoshop CC, face aware liquify. Face Aware Liquify can I automatically identify, not every single face, but it identifies eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the face shape automatically. So if your face was identified, then these would all be active. And it will say, in this case, face one, there's only one face in the image. So now, for example, and this is brand new, when Face Aware Liquify first came out, it did both eyes simultaneously. And that was bad because I only want to make one eye smaller. I don't need to make the other eye smaller. The other eyes, you know, he's happy with. Um, so luckily, the team did break these apart now. So these are now separate controls for the left side and the right side. And you can link them still. So if you want to adjust them um, at the same time, you can just click the link in the middle and that will adjust them at the same time. So we're going to do two things. We're going to adjust the uh, eye size. We're going to bring it down like so and we're going to adjust the eye height we're going to bring that down like so so again before after before after so i am very happy that they decided to make this a separate uh, control and uh just for fun he's so happy about it we can also Make him smile just a little bit. No, 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 you're not happy. Oh, he is happy. Okay, we're gonna make him smile just a little bit. Sometimes they're not happy. Sometimes you go too far, they're not happy, but we didn't go too far. So in this case, he is happier. All right, so we'll click okay. And uh, that takes care of the eye. Now, you notice it said face one. Why would it say face one if there was no face two, face three, so forth and so on? That's because this feature can also work with images that have multiple people in it so in this case um there are multiple people in this image all with different expressions <laughs> one in the middle smiling great smile the one on the right not smiling so much the one on the left kind of smiling in between all right so if we go once again i'm going to just pound this in your head make sure you do the convert for smart filters to keep it non-destructive and then if we go into our filter menu we go down to liquify um, if it can identify all three faces, it will show you now face one, face two, face three. And by the way, you can turn on, um, if we say show guides, I think that will do it. Let me see here. 
No, not show guides. What am I looking for? I'm looking for. Is it show guides? It must be show guides. Show face overlay. Okay, so the show face overlay is on. That's what I really want. All right, so show face overlay is on, and it will let you um, interact with the faces. There we go. If I go to the face where it will show you the over overlay over each one of those effects. So as I'm hovering over her eyes, it's lighting up her eyes, her nose, her chin. Um, same thing on this person. It's lighting up all those areas. So it detected all the faces in this image. And now I can work with the sliders individually, or I could go in, um, even in, in, interact with it on the fly. So I can say this guy, you know, wants his head to be a little smaller. We can make his head a little smaller. We can make his chin a little taller, a little shorter. We can uh, increase his smile or raise his lip, I should say. Make his mouth wider, make his mouth narrower. And there we go, there's a smile. Uh, happy, not so much. Happy, not so much. So you can use the sliders, switch from face one to face two to face three, or you can actually just go in with the face aware liquify option, uh, select it and go in and work with the individual faces themselves. So again, don't do that, don't do that, don't do those things that people will notice about themselves and maybe not like it. Unless you got, unless they tell you to, unless you got full permission to go ahead and do it, then do whatever they want. All right, so for example, if I were to do it from the sliders and I were to go to face one, which is our guy that we were working on, and we already adjusted his smile, so again, I can continue working on his smile, and there we go. Um, I probably messed up his jawline and all that, his chin height, I, you know, it's just plain. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, so, face aware liquefy, use your powers for good, not evil, um, and if, before you make a drastic change or a noticeable change in someone, get permission, uh, because most people will not appreciate that you thought their features needed adjusted, <laughs> unless they told you up front that they did, like I did, I gave you permission. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, click OK. I don't even know if we did anything. Let's, you know what? Let's hold down the Option or Alt key and reset it first. So I just reset it back to square one. Then we can go to the face where liquefy. And I'm just going to play around with this guy because you, um, we didn't play with the nose. So for example, the nose can be skinnier, just so you can see what's possible. The nose height can be longer. <laughs> That's just weird. Uh, the nose height can be longer or shorter, so I didn't get into nose. I did do eyes. I did do face shape. I did do um, nose, eyes, mouth. Yeah, I did do mouth. Okay, so you got all the all the various ones that can be adjusted. And like I said, when in doubt, hold down your option or alt key and reset. Put everything back to the way it was, and then you can start from scratch. Um, will sign in? Will what be uploaded? I'm not sure what you mean by upload. If you mean will this will this video be um, uploaded? It's automatically uploaded when I stop the stream. All right, so I think that is pretty much it. Um, I think I had one more photo example. This guy here. Yeah, this is the only one we. Oh, we didn't do her either. I forgot what I was going to do on her. Oh, I know what I was going to do on her. Same thing um, back here. Fabric just hanging away from her. So again, from a fashion standpoint, that may not make the clothing people happy. So same thing because that's hanging down. And if they want it to hang down, great. But if they don't, you have the ability to change it for them. So once again, you just go in here, just tuck that up a little bit more. I know we're defying gravity, but that's okay. We'll just say the material was tighter. Therefore, it did not hang down as much. Now, keep in mind, you, you may also be adjusting the shadow. So you got to be, be mindful of your brush. So you might want to do a little freeze first or just keep your shadow intact because you are adjusting everything that's within that brush size. There we go. Perfection. And that's dipped down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull that up right about there. Okay. Perfect. Now, I also, by the way, use this on hair. Uh, a lot of times there may be a, like a poof or a little part of hair that's sticking up. So this could also be used to just push the hair around or push it down. 
and get the hair where it should be, like so. All right, cool. So again, before, after, before, after. Just makes things a little neater. And the retoucher secret weapon. Okay, next up was that other image. Not that one, not that one, this one. Oh yeah, this guy just had a bunch of, just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do the, uh, he just had a bunch of little wrinkles. You want to make the clothes look like they were made for the person. Not like they got it off the rack and they're in between the size. Now, sometimes pushing in isn't enough. So you may need to pull out to smooth it out. So if you pushed in and it still looks wrinkled, go to the part that's dipped in and pull that part out to kind of smooth it. Like so. And you're not seeing it because my monitor's in the way. There we go. Pull that back away again. Like so. Oh, see, it's a dead giveaway. I got that line by mistake. You don't want to do that. So let's undo that. And if I really wanted to protect that line, I'd freeze it. So I don't pull that line up by mistake. There we go. Now I can play down there all I want. Okay. Cool. Before, after. A little bit of liquify goes a long way. Use it sparingly. All right, so with that said, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you can now see just with a little bit of liquify, a couple of little brush strokes, you can make the difference in what your portraits look like. And again, I've always said portrait retouching is not about one big thing you fix. It's always about a lot of little things that overall make the portrait look that much better. So with that said, thanks for watching, everybody. I think I am back on tomorrow. I can't remember I am on tomorrow or not what channel or where I'm streaming, but it may be the CC Design channel. Uh, but anyway, stay tuned for my Twitter and my Facebook posts. That way you'll know um, when I'm about to stream and where I'm going to be streaming next. So cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you tomorrow or on the next one. Later. Uh -oh.